Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. All right, here we are, Zach at Bass Pro to Austin, round two. Um, another chronomid pattern for you. Uh, so this is my take on the, uh, the chromie, uh, one of Phil Rowley's patterns, which is a pretty, pretty effective pattern. He uses a couple different materials. Um, and yeah, it's kind of a fun one. So it's quick and easy. Let's uh, head on down and check it out. Alrighty, here we are once again. I'm not used to having the camera this close with all the big streamers we've been tying all winter. Those little lake patterns are uh, tiny. So uh, <laughs> yeah, let's get... Uh... So yeah, this is one I was tying up at the Cloverdale show. Um, Brad filmed it on his phone and uh, it was a little uh, not HD. <laughs> I actually had a customer in today who was... Uh, was watching that video said he couldn't quite make out what the hell was going on so let's do a high definition version for you guys so like I said I use this is my version of the chromie I use a little bit of a different material I use the uh, Mirage tinsel in uh, opal it's a pretty cool material I think you guys have seen me use it before um, it's somewhat transparent and depending on what color you put underneath it changes the color of the material altogether so this one here is tied on white I white thread I believe could be mistaken, but I think it's white. Anyways, I'm going to do this one up on black thread. Kind of, maybe we can do a comparison. It might be black, I don't know. Anyway, so mix up the colors of thread with this one, and uh, it definitely changes the uh, the whole look of the fly, which is kind of neat. So again, must add C49S, size 10. You can do these 8s all the way through 22s, whatever size you want to tie. I've got a 764th white bead that I'm throwing on top of this one. Again, play around with the bead colors. You never know. You never know what's going to work. So I was tying these up at the show and selling them for blowout prices and uh, I couldn't time fast enough. Guys are just gobbling them up. So, once again, we get interrupted by the... Uh, <laughs> we get interrupted once again. I'm going to hold off. Apparently we got a cooking demo going on. I'll try to uh, lock that out. Right up. Here we go. So start my thread. Wind it back. Where did my scissors go? Here they are. And once again with the gills. So it's the same material as the last one. It's that midge gill. Nice and bright white. Again, you zap with a UV light. That thing glows like crazy. So I've got two strands. If I'm going to do have a bunch of these, I'm going to do the gills all at once. So I'll prep however many hooks I want with the gills, then add the beads, then tie the rest of the fly. So I got that sitting right on top, right where I want it. Wrap back a little bit. Help to build up that taper. Trim away. And we're going to whip finish at the back here. And trim away that thread. Don't even have to touch it with these things. Slices right through. Slide my bead up to the front. Reattach my thread. And again, extending it back that far kind of helps to uh, create that taper on this fly. So again, I'm going to go down about halfway, come back up, all the way up to behind the bead. We're going to go back about almost about where we're going to finish this fly. Down the bend quite a ways, and we're going to come back up. Again, just even out that taper. So I'm going to add my rib. You can use flashaboo for this if you like. I like the look of wire ribs on some of these flies. So I've just got some uh, UTC wire here, small size and red that stuff right there. Once again, I'm just going to tuck the one end up into the bead. And I'm going to chase that wire with my thread all the way down my side of the hook. Just take a couple wraps down at the end there. Open spiral turns up to the top. And now I'm going to take some of this opal tinsel 
once again in large size. Cut myself off a good chunk. Tuck that wire into that material clip. And whoop, tie that stuff in right on top. Like I said, depending on what kind of thread you use, it totally changes the look of this fly, which is pretty cool. Let's make sure I'm getting that on how I want it. It seems to be wanting to twist on me. Just like with the last one, don't be afraid to unwind, go back, redo something. This is acting kind of weird. There we go. Nothing like live time. Let's just let it spin on us. There we go. Take our thread all the way back up. I'm pretty happy with that taper there. It's looking all right. So now, let's start winding our tinsel up. And the large size really makes quick work of this. And we're just going to keep going here. Full turn at the back. You know what? I think I did use white on the other one. Just looking at the body here. Lock it down. Let's just have a quick look here. Yeah, so as you can see, with the white thread, it's a little bit lighter. And then with the, uh, the black thread underneath, it completely turns it more of a green color. What is this, Gordy? Apple crumble or something? Peach Cobbler, how about that? You guys got to come in during the week. Sometimes we've got some cool stuff going on. Peach Cobbler, let's give it a go. Oh, yeah. That's all right. That's delicious. Anyways, back to time flies. <coughs> now i got my red wire. Like we did with the last one, I like to do two full turns at the butt. Five to seven turns on the way up. Just to create some nice segmentation. Five. About five to six there. Five and a half. Good enough for me. Fish don't count. And we're just going to helicopter that wire off. There we go. Just like with the last one that we did. Some peacock hurl. Hopefully this one doesn't give me as much of a hard time. So again, when you get the ends are quite brittle, cut off a chunk. And with that hurl facing down, I'm going to tie it in. And again, you don't want this, you don't want the hurl to be any bigger than the bead. Usually about half the size of the bead is all you need. There we go. And lock it down. Trim that away. And a little whip finish. Like I said, I don't head cement the front of these, so... Yeah, double whip finish. You got a new pair of Dr. Slicks, be careful. All you gotta do is just touch that thread. All right, now I'm gonna fold those gills back once again. So it's about the length of the bead. Trim away. There's my gills. All right, once again, using our solar res, UV resin here, in the flex formulation. And we're just gonna squeeze that out. Ooh, come on. Go, good little glob there. Once again with my dubbing needle, just gonna kind of even that out. Tuck it up to right behind that peacock curl. A little too much on there. That's all right. Just pull it away. Just make sure everything's covered. That really helps to protect the uh, the tinsel that's on there. There we go. There we go. 
beauty of these resins, you can keep working with them until you're happy. And that looks pretty good. Once again, my solar res light. I'll pop that guy. And those gills are on fire, which is pretty awesome. Looks like I got some stragglers there. That's funny, I can't even see them against that white bead, but when that light hits them, you betcha I can see them. Just kind of trim those away. Nice sharp scissors. There we go. Tack free. No need for any other coatings on top of your UV resins anymore. This stuff is awesome. Give these guys a look out. They've got the, um, this is the pro kit that they sent me. Um, so it comes with the, like I said, the thin, the flex, and the, uh, the thick formulation as well as the light. And then um, they've got smaller packs. If you're not sure and you want to give it a go, they come in small packs. That's what I sent all the guys up in Pemberton. I kept a nice pack for myself. Sorry, guys. Uh, but, yeah, that's my uh, chromie fly. Pretty sweet looking pattern. And that's the black thread. That's the white. As you can see, totally different looking fly just by changing thread. And you can definitely change it up with uh, green thread and whatever. Give it a go. So, all right, let's uh, head on up and sign out. All right, guys, that's uh, my chromie fly, like I said. Uh, cool little pattern. Again, mix up the thread, mix up the materials, play around with it, post some photos on Facebook. I want to see it in some fish's mouths because I know it works. These ones are going to fish a little bit higher up in the water column um, just because they have more trapped gas inside of them as they're making their way up. So uh, give it a go and send us some photos. We'd love to see them and uh, let us know what you think. All right, one more fly to go. Sorry, Brad, you're going to have your work cut out for you tonight. Uh, but yeah, let's get to it.